What's up guys, Luke here from Luke's Points and Miles and I wanted to do a different sort of video today. Here in the credit card world, we have somewhat of a divide. We have two tribes, two schools of thought, two teams. On one hand, we have Team Cashback and on the other, Team Travel Rewards. Now these teams stand on opposite sides of the spectrum and for the most part, there's peace in the credit card world. We all get along just fine and at least from what I've seen on my channel, the preferences are generally debated politely and each side offers wisdom and perspective. Is there a right or wrong, a good or evil? Well, that depends on what side of the fence you stand. If you're a fan of my channel, you know that I am primarily team travel. You know this because the majority of my videos are travel points and miles related. And every quarter I normally reveal my credit card strategies and wallet. And lately it's been very travel heavy. What you may not know is I try to keep a balance in my arsenal and there could be a time I'm standing on the fence or I may temporarily hang out in Team Cashback's yard. There are obviously several reasons why this could be a good idea for some folks, but for me, I'll tell you that in the last year or so, I've earned tons of transferable currencies and I currently have a surplus of points and miles and all my travel is booked and paid for for the next six months. I'm also entering a phase in my life where I just can't go travel every month. My family has more commitments now, so I have to pick and choose when we take off. None of these things are negative, but there could be a quarter or two in the future where I try out for team cash back just to see how beneficial it can be for me. Today I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of both sides. In the comments below, I'd love to hear to which team you primarily belong and why. I've been getting some great feedback lately and different opinions definitely create a more well-rounded insight into this credit card game. Before we get into that, if you are new around here, I talk about credit cards, points, miles, cash back and travel. If you're interested in those things, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoyed today's video, slap that like button for the algorithm so we can get this video in front of a few more eyeballs. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, let's get this summary out of the way. Today, I'm going to first list the benefits of a cashback system and then some benefits of a travel rewards system. Afterwards, I'll talk about some of the relative drawbacks of each team. After that, I'll give you my thoughts on the matter. Sound good? Well, here we go. First up, the benefits of team cashback. Now, if you have more benefits, list them in the comments below because these are very general. Number one, no annual fees. Now, what I mean by this is we can build great cash back systems without paying any annual fees or at least very low annual fees. You can build a cash back setup with your 2% on everything card like City Double Cash, 5% rotating cards like the Discover It and the Chase Freedom Flex. And there are still several no annual fee cards that offer 3% back on multiple categories such as the Wells Fargo Autograph Card or the Navy Federal Credit Union More Rewards Card. The list goes on. You will have no shortage of finding awesome earning cashback cards from so many different issuers. So I think there is a ton of potential to earn cashback without paying the credit card companies a dime. Number two, simplicity. It doesn't get any more simple than pure cashback or even statement credit. You spend money, you get a rebate back. The most work you'll ever have to do is logging on to your issuer's website or app, check the balance, and maybe transfer that balance to your own cash back checking account. You don't have to worry about transferring points or miles. You don't have to worry about the valuation. 1% cash back is always going to be one penny per dollar spent. 5% of a $100 purchase will always be five bucks. Need a new furnace? Try paying that with Delta Sky Miles. Keeping things simple is a great thing when cash is concerned. I also think that team cash back are maybe better savers because of this mentality. And I might even say they could be better investors as well. Number three, versatility. Now this one kind of goes along with number two, but it just doesn't get much more versatile than cash. Versatility goes a long way when it comes to personal finance. Like the Furnix example earlier, cash back is great when it's extra and you're saving up for a treat. But when you're optimizing a cash back setup, we could be talking about a substantial amount of money at the end of the year. That money can be spent on anything. Christmas, New Year's cruise, help paying your taxes, or more boring stuff like Roth IRA contributions or plussing up an emergency fund. 
Either way, you have control and it's up to you. Oh, and one crazy idea is you can use cash to book travel. Lots of great reasons to be on Team Cash Back right now, but what about team travel? Well, let's have a look at that. Number one for team travel is giant welcome bonuses. Now, cash back cards have welcome bonuses, but these travel cards can have bonuses worth upwards of $2,000 or more, and that's not uncommon. There are American Express sign-up bonuses right now for 170,000 points, which are generally valued at two cents per point, making that sign-up bonus worth a whopping $3,400. And that's on the low end, if you ask me. There are hotel cards that will give you a bonus that will allow you to spend free nights in rooms that cost $1,000 a night. I don't want to go on too long, but you can certainly benefit from the larger bonuses when it comes to team travel. Number two, perks and benefits. Travel cards are generally packed with tons of different perks and benefits, and contrary to popular belief, a lot of these benefits can make your life better. More often, a travel card could have purchase protection, extended warranty protection, as well as more travel perks than we have time to mention. Primary rental car insurance, different benefits when your flight is delayed or canceled, or when your bags get lost. Most travel cards require at least a little bit of time to go over all the benefits offered to make your life a little more enjoyable, and it is very likely that at least some of those benefits will find a way to make your day better at some point. Number three, travel cards can offer exponential value. There is no secret that there are sweet spots and various techniques when using travel cards where folks can get a tremendous amount of value for the points and miles. We have a series on the channel where I go over different points redemptions that are yielding six, eight, 10, sometimes 30 cents per point when redeemed for travel. That is only possible with travel points and miles. So there are some great things about each side, but what about the cons? What are some drawbacks of each side of the tape? Well, let's start with the dark side, team cash back. One, lower rate of return. We touched on this a moment ago. We still have not found out a way to make a penny worth 10 cents. The consistent return on spend is a double-edged sword. We're not going to be making videos on the secret technique to earn 3% cash back on gas purchases. Although your checking account will grow, you're not putting $3,400 cash in there from one sign-up bonus. Number two, capped earnings. This is one that really drives me crazy in the cashback world. A lot of cashback cards have capped earnings, at least when we're talking about the higher earning categories. The Chase Freedom Flex and the Discover It card, they offer 5% categories, which seems super awesome, but they're capped out at $1,500 a quarter. Now, folks can argue they can get multiple Freedom Flex cards, and that's great. The US Bank Cash Plus is also another example of a card that will generate a substantial amount of cash back for things like utilities and cable bills, but there's a $2,000 per quarter cap on spending. So your earning normally will be limited. Number three, foreign transaction fees. Proponents of Team Cash Back might argue, hey, I don't go out of the country, so I don't care. Maybe they don't, but most no annual fee cash back cards have foreign transaction fees, and the world is constantly shrinking. If you ever find yourself paying that 3% fee, you'll likely drastically cut into your cash back. Hopefully, if you are Team Cash Back, you can find a good no annual fee card that does not have these fees, such as the Capital One Saver One card. Moving on, there has to be some downsides of travel cards, right? Yes, absolutely. Number one, annual fees. Most higher end travel cards have some annual fees that will knock your Aunt Connie's socks off. American Express Platinum Card at $695 a year is something most folks would never even consider, and the majority of folks would probably consider it counterintuitive when it comes to their personal finance. On team travel, you're most likely going to pay to play, and that's not ideal for a lot of people. Number two, less control. Remember we talked about cash being a fixed rate, and we couldn't get sky high value? Well, the same is true on the other side of the coin. On team travel, you could have a surplus of points and miles, and that program could instantly make those points less valuable. As a matter of fact, it's basically what they do very regularly. If that happens, well, maybe you should do what I do and employ an earn and burn strategy, but it's inevitable. Number three, and this is probably the biggest one for me, time and effort. 
This one should be number one for most of us because as a team travel points and miles guy, I will tell you that there are layers to this game. And to reach a high level of value, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time learning. You can get along with the basics fairly quick, but to get to the level of transferring points to one airline program, to book a business class ticket on a second airline, and then finding which hotel program is most beneficial in a certain country, yeah, you're looking at a complicated endeavor. Some people think that's awesome, but I know a lot of folks that would rather not spend that time outside of their vocation or their education. So what do I think about all this? Well, most of you know I'm primarily team travel. My motivations are making memories with my family. I have the opportunity to take my wife to places she's never been, and I actually need travel to help give my son perspective and worldliness. We live in a small village, and I need him to experience different things, people, and different cultures. So for me, I'm investing in travel. Does that mean I don't earn cash back? Negative. I actually have a completely separate cash back setup and strategy, and I'm going to deploy it soon, at least for a quarter. And I also think moving forward, you may hear about me acquiring more no annual fee cash back cards. I love both teams, and like I said earlier, we have a lot in common, and it's mostly a sibling rivalry, and it's actually fun. So comment below, guys, which team are you on, and I'm hoping to see some both comments. Also, tell me your pros and cons of your own setup. Slap that like button, and as always, if you've stayed around all the way to the end, I thank you and I appreciate every single one of you.